Hi everyone, welcome to the visual guide for Ferris Sirius. This is one of the new four-man dungeons made available by Patch 2.1 in Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Awoken. You might recognize this place from questing through Lanasia. The tower itself is massive enough to be seen from most of the coastline zones. It's awesome! My name is Mistech, and I'll be your dungeon guide. In this first section, we fight a variety of serious mobs. Watch out for their ground AoE effects as they are a little hard to see in the water here. You'll also encounter these zombies scattered throughout the instance. When someone gets within range, they take a bit of time to activate, so tanks be ready. Be sure to prioritize the zombie barbers before the pirates. The barbers do heal, so it's wise to take them out first. The first boss is Simon the Unsinkable, the zombie captain. Simon has a number of telegraphed AoE attacks that are pretty easy to avoid by standing at max range if you tank him against the wall. The main mechanic to watch out for here are his zombie warhounds. He'll spawn two dogs that need to be killed as soon as possible. These dogs will cast Corrupting Spit on their primary target. This is a really fast ground AoE that is almost impossible to avoid unless you're actively kitting the dogs as they cast. This AoE will place a stacking debuff on the player called Corrupting Crystal. Should the stack get up to 3, you will burst, greatly damaging yourself and everyone around you. It's possible to destroy these dogs before they get a chance to cast their spit, so it's important to DPS them down as fast as possible. Even if you get hit by one or two stacks of spit, the debuff should fall off before you get afflicted with another stack. Simon will spawn more and more dogs, so keep an eye out for new spawns. Throughout the fight, he will also cast Crystalline Shot. He shoots into the air, bringing down the ceiling to form a yellow crystal void zone on the telegraph locations. This can either happen as a single zone in the middle of the room, or two zones dissecting the room. These void zones will grow over time, so be careful not to get caught in them as they grow. These mostly serve as a nuisance to your party as you try to handle the zombie dogs. Just keep your eyes open and you'll be fine. In the next section of the instance, you'll have to deal with more crystal shenanigans as you make your way up the tower. While the crystal explosions on the stairs don't do too much damage, it's probably best to wait for one wave of explosions before running head on. Your healer will thank you for it. Be careful for the extra slime spawns on the stairs. Once your tank gets aggro, AoE your little hearts out. In this next section, you will get assaulted by the massive bird that sweeps down. But only once. I guess they just wanted to see if they could scare you a little before the boss. This part of the staircase is pretty cool, you can actually see the etherite of what I believe is Limsa. The second boss is the zoo, a massive angry bird thing. Although, I guess I'd be angry too if I had a bunch of babies and a group of strangers stormed through turning my whole family into scrambled eggs. Around the room you'll notice white eggs and speckled eggs. Throughout the fight, eggs will threaten to hatch, you'll see them glowing red. If allowed to hatch, a baby bird will spawn. Cockerels will spawn out of the speckled eggs, and pullets will spawn from white ones. Cockerels will target a random player and begin nuking them from a distance. They're easy to see as they have a really obvious purple line linking them to their target. These should be killed immediately as they do substantial damage. The pullets follow a normal threat table and can get pretty annoying pretty fast. Now, it would make sense to just kill all of the eggs at the beginning so you don't have to deal with any ads spawning at all. However, for every egg that you kill, the zoo will get an 8 stack of an enrage buff. If this stack gets over 16, the damage will be too much to handle and you will probably die. Assign 1 DPS to handle killing 1 or 2 eggs a cycle, and kill the rest of the ad spawns after. It's a little easier to handle a bunch of little ads than trying to heal through an enraged zoo. The zoo will also fly up into the air and hover. She will target her primary target, usually the tank, with three sonic storms. This is a quick ground AoE ability that hits for about 1k, but it can be easily kited by the tank if they start running as soon as she begins to hover. Be sure not to run into your party and the damage in this phase is pretty much non-existent. The fight continues until the zoo is dead. I'm not sure what happens if you run out of eggs, but I think it's safe to assume it can't be good. Although, if you've made it this far into the dungeon, I'm sure your gear is good enough to not run into that potential problem. This last section of the tower involves more climbing, more mobs, and more yellow stuff. You'll notice an aether valve that will shut off the corrupting aether clouds on the first part of the stairs. The second valve is a little higher up, and you may have to run through some clouds to get to it. The pudding trash here will cast divide once they're low enough, so tanks be ready to pick up the pudding babies when they pop up. At the top of the stairs, we meet... the... Yeah, I can't even call this guy a boss. I mean, he has the cute little purple boss line, and he does drop loot, but he's nothing more than a glorified gatekeeper. Tyrant will spawn a number of the little ads that can be killed as they come up, or the tank can pick up everything and the DPS can burn the boss down. Make a game out of it and time yourself, see how fast you can get him down. Finally, the last boss, Siren. As long as this instance can get sometimes, this last encounter is kind of worth it. It's pretty fun, and the music is pretty cool. 
Throughout the fight, Siren will summon a number of zombies, pirates, and sergeants, similar to the zombies that you've been killing throughout the instance. The kill priority here is the creepy motherfuckers first. The sergeants will crawl towards their targets and stun them if they reach them. No thank you. The rest of the ads can be easily killed afterwards. Siren will also periodically disappear from the room. This is your cue to run to the center. She will do one of two things here. She can either do a charge across the room, similar to Ifrit's hard mode rush, or she will AoE the entire room outside of the center circle, similar to Chimera's dragon's voice. Since you don't know which one she's going to cast, running to the center will allow you to have enough time to react once you see where she reappears, either on the outer edge of the circle, in which case you run out of the center, or right on top of you, where you can huddle together to avoid the AoE. Continue handling the adds and avoid her special attacks, and you'll have yourself a kill in no time. And there you have it, Pharaoh's Sirius. It's a pretty cool place with some cool encounters, but given how long it feels compared to Hockey Manor, I doubt I'll be seeing a lot of this unless the duty relents is otherwise. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.